Hello and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. My name is Wilson and I am going to teach you all about sliding glass doors today and how to find the right soundproof sliding glass doors. So if you're interested in putting a sliding glass door into your home recording studio, this is the lesson for you. Before I jump in, I do want to let you know I have a free soundproofing resource for you. This is my free soundproofing workshop. It is 45 minutes of in-depth teaching that will go into everything I know about how to soundproof a room and also talk a little bit about acoustic treatment and things like that. So it's the all-in-one workshop for everything you need for building a soundproof home recording studio. To watch that right away, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That is soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's jump into this lesson on how to soundproof sliding glass doors. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing we need to talk about is just how do sliding glass doors work? Because before we can even look at which sliding glass doors to purchase, I want you to be an informed customer and be able to ask the sales team specific questions so that you know what you're talking about and you can really decide which door is gonna be best for your application. So the first thing we need to talk about are the big three when it comes to soundproofing and isolating walls. And this includes your sliding glass doors. The first one is mass. The second one is airtight, and the third one is airspace. So first let's talk about mass. When we're dealing with a sliding glass door, the main mass of the door comes from the glass itself. So we're looking to get really heavy glass, which means it's expensive and hard to source. Now with sliding glass doors, it's a little more complicated than just simply buying the heaviest glass you can find because there are different types of glass. Now, the traditional glass used in most windows and doors is what's known as float glass. Unfortunately, float glass does not have the best acoustic properties for sound isolation. So therefore, I recommend using tempered or laminate glass instead of float glass because you can buy thinner pieces of glass and still get great sound isolation. But if you're stuck on using float glass for some reason, you definitely are going to need to look at matching the weight of your float glass to your existing wall. This means the pound per square foot of the float glass should equal the pound per square feet of your wall. So with a double drywall system with two layers of 5 8 inch thick drywall, that's going to be 4.4 pounds per square foot on each side of the wall, meaning you're going to need two panes of glass, both equaling or exceeding 4.4 pounds per square foot. So if you do the math, you're going to find that you're going to need some pretty stinking thick float glass probably in the range of three quarters of an inch all the way up to one inch thick, which is hard to find and honestly just really expensive. So that leads us to tempered and laminate glass. When I build soundproof windows in recording studios around the world, I like to use a very simple method that I know works really well. And this is to have three eighths inch thick glass on one side of your wall or opening and half inch thick glass on the other side. The glass needs to be either tempered or laminate, or my favorite is a combination of the both having tempered on one side and laminate on the other. The differing thicknesses of glass is super important because there's something known as the coincidence effect where frequencies can get through the glass more easily at a specific frequency in the glass. So this is known as like a hole, a frequency hole where sound can get through more easily. So by having two different thicknesses of glass, we change at which frequency that hole is. So you don't have a direct hole straight through your two pieces of glass. It might get through one glass, but it won't as easily get through that same frequency the other, increasing isolation. So now we know we need either tempered or laminate glass, and we need our glass thicknesses to be at least three eighths of an inch thick on one side and half an inch thick on the other. For those in the metric system, this is 10 millimeters or 13 millimeters. Now let's talk about the air gap. So the air gap is the next component of our soundproof system. Just like a double wall system where you have two layers of drywall, a big air gap between your two walls, and then two layers of drywall on the other side, the air gap in that system is super important. And many people get this wrong. The air gap is actually eight and a half inches thick or eighth, eight and one eighth of an inch thick in the case of our glass. And that is because we're going from the inside of the wall to the inside of the other wall, not the little one inch air gap between your two studs that many people think it's just a one inch air gap. So when we build our sliding glass door, we want a similarly big air gap. 
Eight inches is not uncommon in the double wall system, and it might be more like four inches if you're not using a double wall, but using hat channels to decouple. So in metric, that's about 200 millimeters. So this is a pretty big gap. And for this reason, I highly recommend using two sliding glass doors with differing thicknesses of glass and using tempered or laminate glass. Yes, expensive, but soundproofing is expensive because the materials are expensive. So the more you know, the better you can make decisions on what choice is best for you. Lastly, these doors need to be airtight. It's pretty self-explanatory that when you install the doors, you need to make sure that around the perimeter of the door on both sides, that you use acoustic sealant to make sure that the door is airtight. But the door itself also needs to be airtight. And this is really the hard part about sliding glass doors is that the actual structure of the door itself needs to have gasketing and strips around it, weather stripping strips to make sure that when the door is sliding and when it's closed, it's absolutely sealed airtight. If there's any gaps where sound can get through, you're not gonna have an airtight seal. A lot of people ask me, hey, can I just buy a cheap uh, Home Depot or Lowe's sliding glass door here in the United States, which is the equivalent of your big box stores that you have around the world. And my answer is no, because they're cheaply made, they have bad glass, and for all those reasons, you're gonna spend five to $600 on a door that probably won't really do that much in the long run. So save your money and get the right door. This leads me right into my next point, which is, can you build your own sliding glass doors? The answer is only if you are a structural engineer or you know metalworking engineer. I talked to one guy who hired me um, for some consulting and he was building a sliding glass door for a client, but he could build his own mechanical systems and had experience welding and doing all that. So if, you're, if you don't have those skill sets, I would not try to build a sliding glass door. So for those reasons, unfortunately, if you really want that sliding glass door in your home recording studio, you're gonna have to buy it. All right, so now where should you buy your soundproof sliding glass doors? I'm gonna go through some websites and different companies I've found for locations in the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, or generally speaking, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand. All right, let's start with the United States. So Soundproof Windows Incorporated, they sell uh, patio sliding glass doors here, which is the page I'm on now. And I think they're a great company. I've worked with them in terms of getting quotes and talking to some of their sales reps, and they've been nothing but a pleasure to work with. And I think their pricing is actually completely fair and a really good deal. So for that said, um, this is who I would go, for, go with if you're gonna buy something in the United States. You'll notice with a lot of these companies that they retrofit their sliding proof, soundproof sliding glass doors over top of existing doors, which is something that you could do in your design, or you could talk to them about buying two of their soundproof sliding glass doors, and they could probably help you with that option as well, which will always be superior to using a non-soundproof sliding glass door and then one of theirs, again, because of the glass and the isolation of the door itself. So in Canada, we have a company called Arc Acoustics, and I have not worked with these company, the, the rest of these companies. Um, Soundproof Sliding Glass Doors is the only one I've actually talked to, but doing some research, this looks like a company that looks reputable and they know what they're doing. Um, and if you're in Canada, this might be the best option in terms of getting the best shipping rates. So Arc Acoustics is the best for our Canadian customers. Now, for some reason, I cannot explain it. Europe is just, one of the hardest places to find soundproof suppliers in general. And honestly, the best soundproofing products I've found in the European region are only in the United Kingdom. So that said, this is not an exception there. The best soundproofing company I found, at least with an internet search, was a company called Silent Windows by Hugo Carter. And even then, I'm not sure if this is like the greatest thing, but in terms of finding something in the UK that looks good, this is probably your best put or at least a starting place. So definitely give them a message on their contact page and ask about their sliding glass doors. Now, unlike Europe, Australia seems to have a plethora of soundproofing companies and suppliers, especially when apparently it came to sliding glass doors. So I've built a, a couple studios in Australia and the New Zealand region, and I always found it actually a little bit easier than in Europe to find supplies. So Lotus right here is a company that's based actually in Australia and New Zealand, and they seem to have some interesting products with their sliding glass doors. One of the main things I'm looking at here is the acoustic rating in RW. RW is 
relatively similar to the STC rating in the United States. And we're looking to get, you know, similarly in that 50 to 60 range in terms of our soundproof doors. So you can see a single door um, does not get us quite where we want it. The acoustic rating here is from 29 to 43 with a solid door. But if you're getting a glazed door, so that's what we're going to be looking at, we're going to want to try to get into that 39. Um, the dual is less, which I don't fully understand, but basically two of these single 39 RW doors um, would probably do a really good job. And again, you want to talk with the company specifically, say, hey, this is for a studio, I need a high level of isolation, and talk through the different points I mentioned earlier in this lesson. Another option I found in Australia was this company called Prestige Plus. Uh, this is a lift and slide door. So this is kind of a different approach, but they also look like they know what they're doing um, and is a good option for reaching out for a consultation and just getting a general quote on their doors. And if Australia didn't have enough options already, there is a third option, which is this company called Soundproof Windows out of Melbourne. And uh, they have a double glazing sliding patio door. So this is another option you could look into. Again, making sure that you're getting the right STC or RW rating. Um, again, ideally in that 55 to 60 range, remember our walls are an STC rating of 63. So we're trying to match that as best as we can. Lastly, again, for my friends in New Zealand, there is a Lotus based out of .NZ, so you will get the New Zealand version of this company. So again, I would look at their doors um, as well, ask them the same questions, try to get the highest isolation that you can. And lastly, I found this company that seems kind of interesting called Glide in New Zealand, and uh, they pretty much specialize in office doors or commercial doors, but it could be a great option for your studio as well. So it's worth checking into if this is something you're interested in, or you like the look of these large sliding gl glass doors. Um, again, you definitely would have to grill them on the actual acoustic value. A lot of these sliding glass doors are made for voice and office and meetings and not necessarily for banging on a drum kit. So keep that in mind as you are shopping for sliding glass doors. All right, I hope you found this video super helpful in trying to decide if you need a sliding glass door and if you really want one, which one you're gonna get and how you're gonna go about getting it. So the big things to remember are first, sliding glass doors by nature are not very good at isolating. Glass is always gonna be weaker than a solid material like wood or metal. So if you can get a door that doesn't have glass, it's gonna have higher isolation. Unfortunately, sliding glass doors are just not that easy to find, especially high quality studio grade sliding glass doors. So you gotta do your research. And this means when you're talking to the sales reps on the phone of different sliding glass door companies in your area, you need to ask some specific questions. First, tell them that you're trying to build a home recording studio and you need an STC rating ideally in the 55 plus region. And that could also translate to an RW rating in places outside of the United States that use a different rating system of around 55 or 50 RW as well. Make sure you tell them that you want two doors. If they try to sell you just a single door, remember that it's gonna, not gonna have the same isolation as two doors with that air gap, because the whole system works to help with isolation. So a single, really heavy glass door is never gonna be as good as two heavy glass doors. Make sure you ask what type of glass they have. Is it ta tampered or laminate glass? If it's float glass, then make sure to steer clear of that provider. Remember, you're looking for two different thicknesses of glass ideally. Remember my benchmark of 3 8 of an inch and half an inch glass that's tempered or laminate is the goal. Again, that's 10 millimeters or 13 millimeters in the metric system. Lastly, remember to try to get as big of an air gap as you can between your two sliding glass doors. That 200 millimeter or air eight inch air gap is a good goal to reach for. All right, I hope you have enjoyed this video on how to soundproof sliding glass doors. I hope it's helped you understand a bit more about what makes a sliding glass door work. And lastly, check out that soundproofing workshop. If you are on this journey of trying to build your own home recording studio, this resource will single-handedly help you out with getting to where you want to be. You can watch it right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, I'll see you all next week with more information on soundproofing and room acoustics.